Here we are then, people. Here we are then, people. Here we go. We have got... Let's move this team out. So here we go. We've got 24 clubs all ready to get their predictions done by me. Of course, of course, of course. Let's start off with... Do we start off with... Actually, no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. i got a better idea. Actually, let's start off with the teams down here, such as, like, you know, let's start off with Crew. So, the first off, we're going to start off with Crew Alexandra. Basically, Crew, um, they're a solid side. They've got solid young players, such as Ainley. Ainley is one of them, for example. Plus, their signings, they also signed um, Omar Beckles as well. He's a definitely, he, I think he's definitely going to be a great signing. For crew as well. David Artel has definitely taken crew places. I mean, he got the job in early 2017. I believe crew were 17th in League 2, then um 15th, then a 13th place finish. And now they've got promoted via via the season ending. You know, they've got other players such as Don Voran Daniels as well. So that's a, that's a great pickup, actually, because his last club was actually Luton. Although he spent time on loan at Don, Donny as well before, obviously, the season was just curtailed right there. You know, they got Will Jeskalainen and Perry. Perry, so... And G, so... I, Winter as well. So I definitely think Crew will... They should place around here. And that would definitely be a solid season. That would definitely be a solid season as well, in my my eyes anyway. Next up is the MK Dons. Oh, I shouldn't really be saying Dons because I'm from South London as well. AFC Wimbledon is quite local to me, but it's not really local, local. But if if I lit, if I got like transport, then you know the Wimbledon ground is like it it takes under an hour to just get there from where I'm located. I from where I locate, so, yeah, okay, cool, let's go in, MK Dons, they lost Reese Healy as well, I believe he was the top score scorer, sold him to Toulouse, Russell Martin did very well to keep up MK Dons, an unachieving MK Dons, but could be a relegation scrap, I don't know if they'll place here, but, uh... Ah, man, this is Orcs. I think NK Dons will place around there. Like, if it if they place here, it's really kind of expected, but who's going to get the goals for NK Dons? Hopefully, the other guys can step up. Oh, yeah, Richard Keogh to find a home in NK Dons after what happened with Derby County. Yeah, guy got injured. Yeah, Mason Bennett and Tom Lawrence didn't have their contracts terminated, and he did. Yeah, such a shame. I mean, it's a big shame, actually. Big shame. Anyways, guys, let's roll on to the next team. Lincoln City. Lincoln had a great... And, I mean, they had a decent League One campaign. I mean, they had a great start with the Cowleys as well. Then they went to Huddersfield. They kind of slowed down a little bit under Michael Appertoon. But he's been making some very shrewd signings, you know. He's been... He's definitely been about it. You know, so he signed jo Theo Archibald, Joe Walsh, Conor McGrandles. He signed two men from NK Dons, actually. He signed two men from NK Dons. I did not even clock that as well. They got in TJ Mo, Mo uh, Callum and Palmer and Callum Morton, both from West Brom. And I think Lincoln City could have a great campaign. They could definitely surprise a few people. You know, especially on the list I'm seeing right now. They could definitely surprise a few people, you know. Reasonable prediction would just put Lincoln City there. But maybe, maybe, just maybe Lincoln could break. Lincoln could break that top half mould, you know. Which would definitely be good for them. Um, Plymouth Argyle. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, what do I think of them? What do I think of them? It seems to me, guys, that, um, don't get me wrong. The manager, Ryan Lau, is just something, man. He, like, he's taken Plymouth up and he took Berry up before, you know, Berry 
were he took Berry up when Berry was had their financial troubles. Like that is a freaking achievement, bro. And he's taken Plymouth Argyle up as well. Like that is a just an achievement. Honestly, I don't think. Oh yeah, Plymouth will. Plymouth won't. I don't think Plymouth will get promoted. But he's Ryan Lau is making a stamp on his team. He signed Ben Reeves from NK. Oh my God, NK Dons have lost so many man. And I realize NK Dons have just been raided that they could easily be placed here or probably here, you know. But I'll just leave a mid tier for now. But Plymouth Argyle, yeah, they can rock up in this mid tier slot as T table slot as well. Maklov, Reeves, you know, McCormick, Noble. They've been doing business, bruv. Ryan Hardy again coming in from Blackpool. Bruv, they have been, they have been active in the transfer market. AFC Wimbledon, guys. Man. Ooh. AFC Wimbledon released a lot of players. Which shows that the manager probably has a limited budget to actually work with due to, you know, um, the stadium construction and everything. But I, I think... I think when AFC Wimbledon actually move into the new stadium, I think that could play a part whether they can achieve survival again. And I think, no, ah, uh, I'm gonna kind of, I'm kind of gonna be a bit biased. Like, I'm kind of, kind of gonna be a bit biased there. But I think AFC Wimbledon, I don't think now maybe they can probably get in. But I just feel like, if anything, they'll be in the relegation scrap for sure. But I think, yeah. Survival would just be very good. It would be very nice for um, FC Wimbledon there, actually. Next up is Accrington Stanley and John Coleman. And, bruv, Accrington have definitely been the talk of the last two league seasons. Survival, when there was probably literally, like, everybody's relegation favourite. It's just, like, Morecambe, isn't it? Um, everyone's relegation favourites, but somehow... Accrington Stanley pull it out the bag and survive and man yeah I think under John Coleman I think Accrington Stanley can achieve that survival but if he does leave for a better club then unfortunately I think Accrington could really be relegated that I think that I think Coleman is a great manager I think he I think he's a great manager great great manager as well. Let's see who he signed. Cameron Burgess from Scunthorpe. Yeah, that, that's a shrewd addition, actually. Next up, Northampton. And I think... Uh, I, I don't know. They wasn't predicted to even win the lead two playoffs. And I think the playoffs have definitely been the story of the underdogs, man. Northampton, Wickham, Fulham all going up as well. Not teams you would usually expected to go up, but... Yeah... Actually, tell a lie. Maybe not Fulham, because obviously Brentford have been so... Brentford are just so... Oh, man. I don't think Brentford have ever won a playoff tournament. I'll take that back about Fulham. I'll take that back about Fulham. But anyways, guys. Anyways, guys. Let's have a look at Northampton right now. Northampton done well. They smashed XR 4-0 in the league. In the playoff final. Final. But I just think there's not enough quality inside to prove themselves worthy of escaping you know especially like the survival just candidates just right here AFC Wimbledon just Accrington Stanley these guys are just wow whenever people say they're relegation favorites they just always just clutch up season after season after season they just clutch up oh yeah Northampton actually signed a guy from from non-league called Ricky Corboa so big him up man first season in professional football Really looking forward to see what he's about. Big up. Can, how many goals he's actually going to score is a big question. But yeah, man. Uh, Northampton will be relegated, but they'll definitely put up a fight. I think they'll probably... I wouldn't be shocked if Northampton actually take the fight to the final day. That's my opinion. Next up is Rochdale. And man, I hate to say it, but Rochdale are going to have to go here. Because um, I've got good reasons for this guy. I've got i got a reason for this, guys. Ian Henderson, how do you replace that guy's goals? And obviously, um, you know, how do you replace the 15 goals from Ian Henderson in the league last year? I don't know, man. I don't know. The f the other, I'm looking at the other strikers and, like, it's like, yeah. Where are they going to get goals from? I think another... 
They've got another academy player as well. I think oh, the depth is just not there. The depth is just... Uh, it's not there, man. It's not there. I honestly think Rochdale will struggle the entire... The, they lost um, Callum Camps to Fleetwood as well, which doesn't even help them. I, I just... Ah, uh, oh man. It, it is going to be such a struggle for Rochdale. I hate to say it, but... Four teams have got to go down. Four have got to go. And unfortunately, yeah. I, I think the writing was definitely on the wall. In my eyes, when... um. Uh, Henderson left Rochdale for Salford and um, Callum Camps went to Fleetwood Town. Oh, uh, man. Oh, uh, man. So, yeah. Next up is Gillingham now. Gillingham. Um, let's have a look, quick look at them right now. They got 10th. They actually got 10th. They actually had a solid season, you know. They actually had a solid season. They actually signed Robbie McKenzie on loan. Jordan Graham from Wolves. On a free, Mellis on a free as well, Jackson on a free, Oliver on a free as well. So they Gillingham, Steve Engine will be doing some shrewd business as well. And also the fact that um there's two Arsenal players out on loan as well. Zek Medley on loan, season long loan, Trey Cole as well. Hopefully Gillingham can actually go places you know, hopefully they develop Medley and Trey Cole. So I'm for this reason, I might place I'm gonna give Gillingham another top half finish just for um just for their transfer business, man. I I definitely think Steve Adams is making is making some signings. Uh, knowing from his Peterborough time, yeah. Um, Bristol Rovers, guys. Bristol Rovers. Um, they had a great start under Graham Collin last year. I believe they were playoffs. Bristol Rovers was actually in the playoffs by the time he left, but Ben Garner only picked up ten points from fifteen. So, yeah, I'm going to have to place Bristol Rovers there. I don't think Bristol Rovers will be troubled. Troubled yet. I don't think Bristol Rovers will be troubled yet. But I don't think Bristol Rovers will be troubled. But, um, yeah, I think Ben Garner will probably do just enough. Now that he signed guys uh, such as Zane Westbrook, Zane Westbrook is a fancy signing that. So I'll actually give um, give credit to Ben Gardner for that. Jonah Ayungo as well from having a Waterlooville. He scored a lot of goals as well. Can he cut it for Bristol Rovers? Mm, maybe he can. Tatunda as well signed from um, Barnett as well. was actually a low-key transfer of that. And also Josh Grant getting a home, a permanent home actually, in Bristol. So the cause, so I think they'll go there. So we've got 14 teams left. Next up is Burton Albion. Nigel Cloll is gone and Jake Buxton is the new manager. The new player manager actually for Burton Albion. And I think that it could, their time could be up, but... They've made some really good signings. They made some good signings, guys. I think Burton will definitely push it and take it to the final day, but I just think luck won't be on their side or something due to the just... Yeah, man. These two teams, they just always seem to clutch up when necessary. They always seem to clutch up. So, yeah, Burton Albion are going to somehow... And obviously in the championship, Burton Albion didn't... I think they took it to the final day. Or did they get relegated on the final day? I think they got relegated on the final day. But yeah. Burton need to be out of the zone. To make sure they survive. Because Wimbledon and Accrington are just clutch specialists. And obviously Wimbledon. With their new stadium. Man when the fans return. That could be a great atmosphere. Plow Lane. So yeah. Let's have a look at Burton's transfer. Stephen Lawless. Great signing for them. Um, Bostwick and RD. Come in. Luke Varney's come back as well. Had a great season at Shelton on a free to help out. Help out. And he's also a coach there, so he'll be helping Jake Buxton as well. Kane Hemmings, great. Had a great season for Dundee as well. Great season for Dundee. So big up, man. But yeah, anything of anything that involves Burton staying up, that would be a great achievement. You know what I mean? For um 
Jake Buxton. Let, let's go to Hull City. Now, Hull City, I think Hull City, ideally with the squad that they have, Hull City should really be looking at getting back up. But I personally think Hull City will place here. Well, they'll be near. They'll be near. They'll be. They will be near the. Uh, they'll be near the promotion running. They'll be near it. But I don't think they'll get into it. Well, well, they can get into it. They can get into it. But obviously, you know how much the questions are asked of the Allen's man. How much are they going to invest? Like, how much have they? How much have Hull even spent? Because you know. We don't know the fees. Most of them are undisclosed. You know, Jao Bowen went for 20, 20 M's. Grigesi Grzicki went for a fee, a high fee as well, even though that was undisclosed. He went for a high fee. You know, so they Hull City can't rely on those two again. You know, you know, Hull went down because they accumulated six points when both from like so many games when Jao Bowen and Grzicki left. I think they only won once, in fact. When, since the both of them left. So Hull definitely need to snap out of this losing mentality. That they currently have going on. Although they could be boosted by the fact that they did best Sunderland on a penalty shootout. After the goal is draw in the EFL Cup. But well, obviously you know the EFL Cup is a different it's a different kettle of fish compared to the league. One because it is coming. Like I said. Hull need to snap out this losing mentality. Like I think. Hull could have a great season, if especially if Tom Eves can find that goal-scoring form that he once had for Gillingham, which earned him that move to Hull City. If he scores the goals for fun, then it's going to be a great season for Hull. Obviously, there's going to be other players that are ready to step up, like Keen Lewis Potter. I, he becomes really good on FM, especially James Scott as well, another player that becomes really good as well. So I'm looking forward to see what Hull can deliver, but the Alums have definitely poisoned that club, man. Just three years ago, Hull City had both Harry Maguire and Adji Robertson. Now, three years later, they are in League One. Wow, wow, and wow. Okay, now, on to the next club, and that will be Swindon Town. Now, Swindon Town have one league. They were champions of the Skybet League 2. Their manager is Witchy Wellens. So he's definitely turned Swindon around. And here's... And definitely the biggest signing so far that I have to say is Brett Pittman. Because um, when Brett Pittman first came to Portsmouth, man, he was banging in the goals like it was yesterday, dog. Like... Yeah, I definitely think Swindon will have another great League One campaign. I don't think that Swindon, maybe they could flirt with relegation, but I don't necessarily think they'll go down. You know what I mean? They also got Matty Smith on from Arsenal, who I'm definitely watching very closely. And also they signed Johnny Smith, Tyler Smith from Sheffield United. And they got a new keeper called Cover as well, a Setch Republican. And he's on loan from Man, Man United, so... Expecting some big things. Obviously, the loss of Ewan Doyle, Keshi Anderson, and Jerry Yates will all hurt Swindon. But I, I, I just think Richie Wellens will definitely find something, just a little bit of something in that Swindon lineup to just ensure. And on the signing of Brett Pittman, you know, the signing to Tyler Smith on loan from Sheffield United prove that maybe. And also Hallam Hope as well from loan from Carlisle United. Maybe shows that Swindon definitely won't miss those three. You know what I mean? Next up to is Blackpool. I think, yeah, definitely Blackpool. Under new ownership, I think they definitely have a plan. They definitely got a plan under Neil Critchley, the new head coach. Um. So, yeah, let's see. He He's picked up Keshi Anderson. So Keshi Anderson is now at Blackpool. Jerry Yates is now... So, it's actually mad. Two out of the three guys 
that were banging in the goals at Swindon and now at Blackpool. And for this reason, maybe, just maybe, Blackpool can get in the playoffs. And to be honest to you, Blackpool could definitely do something this season. Ethan Robson on free agent, Jordan Williams as well, CJ Hamilton as well, Sarkic free agency, uh... I think they signed someone that was released from Leighton Orient. I can't say his name. Dimitri Mitchell as well. Definitely coming back. He's came back. He's been signed on the free agency as well. That's massive for Blackpool. That is literally massive as well. They also signed Dan Kemp on loan from West Ham. So I'm expecting big teams from Blackpool this year. They did let a lot of people go. But maybe, maybe Blackpool can get in these playoffs. You never know. Especially, but they they seem to be building a deep, a, a great, great, great squad. We're gonna flip, guys. Yeah, they are in administration. They could easily place around here. Oh, I don't, I don't even know at this exact point, man. There's a few other teams, but I just think we're gonna flip. We'll just place around. Oh, I don't even know. Okay, 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 wait, wait, wait. There's got to be six teams in there. There's got to be six teams. Okay, we're going to flex. I don't know. We don't know what we're going to flex squad will look like. Um, okay, yeah. We can finish 13th in the... Well, they were... Without the deduction, Wigan would have finished 13th. And they was one of the most informed teams. See, this is the problem. They were one of the most informed teams... After the lockdown, but obviously they went into administration. Now they lost most of their guys that they would have definitely, definitely, I think, would have definitely performed in this league. Such so as Joe Gerhardt going to Leeds, United, Jensen Weir going to Brighton, Balogun going to Rangers, you know, other guys such as Alfie Devine going to Spurs, Keith Moore going to Cardiff City, Shea Dunkley, Lewis McLeod, Williams, Robertson, Lowe. Windass, keep Prey even, David Marshall, all out of the door. And you would expect more outgoings will soon follow at Wigan. So we don't know. They have signed a few players. They have signed a few players, actually. You know, Dan Garner and Viv Solomon Otterbor. But mainly, mainly Wigan Athletic going to have to be reliant on some youngsters. Youngsters, but... I don't know. Wigan could definitely, if they get out of administration, they could definitely make a push. Would Wigan have enough to get top six? I do not know. But um, yeah. Next is Shrewsbury Town, and I think yeah, I Shrewsbury are probably gonna have to go in here. Let me just think of some reasons for this. Actually, I'm trying to. Uh, I don't really know much about certain teams but let's just see let's just see what's been happening Ricketts as well the manager um they made two signings Josh Daniels from Northern Ireland Rickel Pike on a free they got in Scott High Fossey and Sarkic but they that Beckles rejected a new deal Josh Laurent going yeah I, I just think I don't know, guys. I think it might be Shrewsbury might be struggling, but I don't know. Have I been kind of harsh on Shrewsbury? But have I kind of been harsh on them? Because I look at this and think, oh, yeah, I just think four relegation places is harsh, but it is what it is anyway. I just think AFC Wimbledon and Accridge and Stanley just they just clutch up, and then obviously somebody big just, I mean. Every season, there's probably, you know, that club oh, before last season. There was always that club that you wouldn't expect to get relegated that got relegated. You know, we've had it in 1819 with Plymouth. Um, maybe even Bradford, even. You could probably even say. Um, 1617 with Cov, Coventry or something like that. Uh, 17th, 18th. 18 with MK Dons. You, you know, you, you know, the list goes on. The list goes on, basically. The list goes on. So, yeah. Fleetwood Town up next. And bruv, 
Barton must be a wounded man. A wounded man. Man thought he could probably wipe the floor with Wickham, but boy, Wickham wiped the floor with him, bruv. It was peak. It was peak. But he's got some blood. Callum Camps as well. Callum Camps is coming. But I just think Will, Will Fleetwood have enough to push Jordan Rossita on loan from Rangers. But will Jordan have but will Fleetwood have enough to push again for a player spot? Well if they if well if they were really about it then bruv they would get it again. But Whelan, they got like experienced guys such as Whelan, Duffy, Chad Evans, but new guys like Callum Camps, Paddy Madden, still about. He scored a lot of goals actually. So Fleetwood to definitely be up there. Would they have enough to get part get in the playoffs again? I don't know. But they should they should make a rally for the playoffs after what happened. Getting beat by Wickham was just Oh man, annihilation. Next is Oxford United. And I, I honestly think, guys, right now, Oxford United could get into the playoffs again. Carl Robertson's stock is as a manager is rising massively. You know, he's had stinks at NK Dons, Schultz and Affleck. He's had one promotion campaign with uh, NK Dons. He's had playoff experience with Shelton. He's had playoff experience with Oxford. Like, the guy literally just knows how to get into the top six. He Like, he knows how to get in the top six. Losing captain Rob Dickey to QPR was kind of a bit of a blow. But they did get in Matty Taylor to help out experienced youth as well. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. Maguire has also come in as well. Jamie Mackey has retired. So I'm looking forward to see what Carl Robertson actually does. Next up is Charlton Athletic. It's Charlton Athletic. And to be honest to you, Charlton could even go here realistically. Or Charlton will place... Here now, I think Charlton. I wanna, I wanna say that think good things will come to Charlton eventually, and I'm hoping good things will also come to Wigan Athletic eventually as well. Um, Charlton Athletic, they, I don't know, their season could definitely go one or two ways. Like they have a takeover, they get a takeover, they keep Lee Boyer, they're gonna be in these players. But if not, I just think Charlton will just. They'll just be around in this tier. But I think right now, they think they definitely be. Who did they beat in the in the League Cup? I think they beat someone in the League Cup. I think that was Swindon, actually. I, I'm not sure. But, yeah, Bond scored that game. I think Barkar as well, a 17-year-old, scored that game as well. So, I'm looking forward to see how these Charlton youngsters actually perform. I think they've... I think Lee Boy has definitely made some shrewd signings despite the off-field uncertainty. And everything, hopefully everything goes well for Shelton Athletic. Um, yeah. Next is Sunderland now to be expected. Sunderland will just... They're going to have to get playoffs. Their expectations is just so high. Like, like, shit, like, I just think... League One is so competitive. Like, big teams usually stay in this league for so long. They can't really get out of it. Sheffield United took six years to get out of League One before they made it back to the Premier League. You know, Sunderland have made a lot of of transfers, actually. Aidan O'Brien, Bailey White, Morgan Feeney, Remy Matthews, Kenton Richardson as well. Um, because of a defender, Danny Graham as well. And they've also released all the Deadwood that was holding them back. Baldwin as well. Joel Lynch. Lafferty. McLaughlin. Even Robson. Tommy Smith. Duncan Watmore. He was just so injury prone. Ozturk as well. Mwamba has gone to Norwich City on undisclosed fee. So yeah. Sunderland. I think Phil Parkinson was actually starting to win over the fans since... Before the lockdown happened, but really and truly his objective is to get minimum playoffs because I feel like he will face the chop if he doesn't get into those playoffs. 
Next is to oh man, this is a problem, guys. This is a big problem. Doncaster Rovers are a solid League One side. You could argue that. Doncaster Rovers are a solid League One side. I wish I could definitely put Donny and Charlton borderline because it's actually hard to it's actually hard to make these predictions. It's actually hard. But Donny, you know James Coppinger. His last ever season as a professional footballer before he retires, and man, that would be it would be a dream for him to get promoted with Doncaster and then get a set, promote Doncaster to championship and then get a send off. It would be a solid achievement. But again, the one thing which let them down in their ability to reach players was inconsistency and Darren Moore definitely needs to address that. I definitely think Darren Moore could become a great manager as well. Don't get me wrong, he's a black manager, so I'll definitely get he he will definitely have my support for me, but sadly us who's going to replace sadly as goals, we don't know. Hopefully Fejiri can actually step in and get goals as well he got three and two but you know I just think this for one reason and I've, I'm gonna put Charlton out of the running out of the playoff thingy so is Charlton but I guess if we get a takeover then maybe you and Doncaster will probably swap places but yeah it's just the uncertainty it's the uncertainty over the whole thing man it's just the uncertainty Oh, guys, it's... Oh, yeah, Peterborough United, guys. Peterborough United. You might be thinking, this is weird. But you might be thinking, Peterborough United for automatic promotion? Peterborough United for automatic promotion? Now, you might be thinking, whoa, 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 and whoa. Yeah, as I said before with the other teams as well, the use Oxford blew their big chance to be in the second tier. Don't get me wrong. That's how it is. And also, it's Sunderland, it might be a new dawn for them, but I just think Peterborough United. Peterborough's performances in March were just so good. Before lockdown hit, like, if if, P if the season continued, Peterborough was going to be in the playoffs. But, you know, the clubs voted against restarting the Premier League. The League won. Wickham got in the playoffs on points per game. And Wickham went up, which definitely hurt Peterborough and Sunderland, who definitely feel they probably could have got playoff places. So those two should really be motivated this season. Those two should really be motivated. And to be honest... Sunderland and Peterborough, they'll definitely be in a promotion running. But, you know, uh, yeah, even losing Ivan Tony isn't a big blow because he's got Johnson Clark, Jaron Ferguson's got Johnson Clark Harris. He knows how to find the back of the net. And Peterborough United throughout the season in League One, they score a lot of goals, but they, you know, they concede a lot. So, yeah. It's just Peterborough's tactics, but as long as Peterborough outscore the opposition, then yeah, who knows what could actually happen. And now that they signed Sammy Samoditz as well, like, yo, they could definitely go places. Ipswich Town, yeah, they're gonna have to go here. Um, Ipswich Town, man. It switched town. We're top of the league by the new year and completely fumbled the bag. Completely fumbled the bag. They did not get in the playoffs at all. Completely fumbled the bag. Paul Lambert, he got a new contract and then it was like, yeah, the guy just fumbled the bag. Fumbled so many bags. It's like, uh, yeah, 
How can you finish 11th, man? How can you finish 11th after being top in New Year's? Honestly, like, it makes no sense. But he did sign, Lambert signed Ollie Hawkins on a free, Stephen Ward on a free, and Cornell on a free, letting Wilkin go, and Danny Rowe as well. But will that Ipswich squad rally up and get in the playoffs? Only time will tell. James Norwood, if James Norwood bangs in the goals again, um, then yeah, I don't see why not. And also, the youngers as well, they'll surely contribute. Which leads me to the last... Yeah, you might be thinking... You guys might be thinking, Portsmouth champions? Really? Really? Pompey champions? Am I being biased here? Like, I don't know, man. Kenny Jacket is wounded. He's wounded. I honestly think right now, if it wasn't for that slow start, Portsmouth would be in the championship. Hands down. Like, there's no denying it. That slow start early on in the season, some supporters have just completely lost their faith in Kenny Jacket, but sometimes you just still gotta believe. You still gotta believe. He's got he's got he's got experience getting teams out of League One. You know, he's done it with Wolves, but obviously Wolves had the biggest budget that season. They had the biggest budget that season due to the parachute payments. And everything. And also, he has experience promoting Millwall out of the League One as well. After a failed, after, you know, a mi- after a relegation battle in his first year at Millwall. Then losing the player final that next season after. Then winning the player final. And then consolidating Millwall in the championship as well. So he has experience at that field. And also he took Swansea out of uh and yeah, he took Swansea out of League Two as well. So he, he's he's experienced with promotion. He is very experienced with promotion. Now to talk about Pompey signings and what they could bring. Their only transfers in is Sean Raggett coming in on a free and Callum Johnson from Accrington Stanley and um Cameron Pring as well. From Bristol City. And they let. Burgess went on a free. McGeary gets his contract. Ollie Hawkins rejects the contract. Brandon Horstrup went to Kilmarnock. Um, Brett Pittman. Went. You know. He got released. And he went to Swindon. You know. I'm expecting big things from. Who will be the keeper. For the upcoming season. You know. Alex Bass. You know. McGilvery. You know. They got a. I mean, the defence should be solid. What more in there? Ragger in there. Bolton in there. You know, Lee Brown's still about. I just think maybe Portsmouth should have a couple, add a couple more to actually ensure that it can be a successful season. You know, the strike force of Marcus, Arison, Curtis, you know, Fairchild should maybe get some more game time. Harness as well. Solid on the wing. Ryan Williams as well. You know... Is this a championship squad? But this is the cream of the crop. But who else do I think? But there's a lot of contenders actually. Let's just sort out the placings right now, man. Let's just sort out the placings. Yeah, let's just sort out the placings real quick. Yeah, debatable with Shelton. Maybe they could get in ahead of Doncaster and Blackpool. If they get a takeover, deal done. Let's just place whole city. Let's just place whole city. Right, you know. Let's just put let's just place Fleetwood in eighth. Um I don't even know. You know the you know the placings in the top half is actually debatable, you know. You know yeah, but I think Lincoln. Uh yeah, Gillingham and Lincoln will get in. Then you got Wigan Affleck, I think, will head the pack. Will head that pack. Um, crew as well could have a great season as well. Swindon, let's move Swindon. I don't know. I don't even know. 
Actually, you know what? I, I don't even know. I don't even know at this point, man. It could be anyone's game. It could be anyone's game. Let's move the Dons. You know what I mean? Let's just leave it like that, man. Let's just, uh, you know, AFC, Hackerton. Yeah, Rochdale, they're going to have to be... But I think these two will actually take the fight. These three will fully take the fight. They'll fully push to look for that survival. But here's my predictions. So, yes.